On that pivotal day, Caitlin, a six-year-old Sumatran tiger at the brink of motherhood, began her labor around 11 a.m. under the watchful eyes of her devoted caretaker, Jail, and his team, as a critically endangered species. Each birth is a monumental event, and Caitlin's was no exception. The specially designed birthing enclosure, lined with soft hay to provide comfort, signaled the imminent arrival of new life. Jail, a constant presence at her side, represented not just hope but a steadfast guardian dedicated to the conservation of these majestic creatures. The labor was a tense affair, particularly as this was Caitlin's first pregnancy. Her every move was monitored, each heartbeat a testament to the ongoing struggle of her species. Jail and his team of eight handlers had prepared meticulously, driven by a profound commitment to animal welfare and species preservation. Their approach to care was hands-on, informed by years of accumulated knowledge and a deep respect for the natural world. As the day wore into the late afternoon, anticipation reached its peak. Back in the control room, staff members watched breathlessly through a live feed, the atmosphere thick with suspense. At 5 p. M. As Caitlin delivered her first cub, the room fell into an ominous silence. The cub, though alive, was distressingly weak, its feeble attempts at breathing punctuating the tense air. This critical moment was heart-stopping. As the cub's survival hung precariously in the balance, the team's extensive preparation now faced its ultimate test. Caitlin, driven by maternal instinct, and the team, fueled by a fierce determination to prevent the loss of even a single cub. Were enveloped in a battle against time, the cub's struggle for life was not just a medical emergency. It was a poignant episode in the broader narrative of conservation. Every second was laden with gravity. Every action a potential difference between life and death. The situation was agonizing. As Caitlin paced restlessly, her team stood by grappling with the excruciating decisions that lay ahead. It was a stark reminder of the challenges faced in the fight to save endangered species. The events of that day underscored the delicate balance of life and the relentless effort required to sustain it. Each moment was a stitch in the fabric of survival, each decision a thread in the ongoing effort to ensure the future of the Sumatran tiger. As a stark reminder of the precarious situation, the loss of each cub dramatically impacted the survival prospects of the endangered species. Caitlin and her newborn cubs played a pivotal role in the critical conservation efforts aimed at rescuing the Sumatran tigers from the brink of extinction. Recent surveys had alarmingly reported that only between 400 to 600 of these majestic creatures remained globally. Every healthy cub born was a vital step forward in the desperate battle to prevent the species from vanishing. The global conservation community was captivated when Caitlin, residing in an Australian zoo, successfully gave birth to her first litter. The gravity of these concerns weighed heavily on Jail and his dedicated team of caregivers as they helplessly observed the distressing scene unfold. Meanwhile, one of the cubs was struggling fiercely to survive, its small body trembling with each effort to draw in essential oxygen. During this critical period, the cubs tiny frail body exhibited a relentless determination to live. As the minutes ticked by, the initial optimistic hopes for the cub's survival began to wane. However, a pivotal moment arrived when Caitlin's deep maternal instincts powerfully surfaced. A new wave of hope mingled with the fear that had gripped everyone. At this crucial juncture, she instinctively began a series of actions akin to those performed during human childbirth. In human childbirth, a nurse meticulously cleans the newborn, ensuring no amniotic fluid remains, and clears any obstructions from the baby's nose to facilitate easy breathing. Simultaneously, the nurse gently rubs the baby's back and chest to promote steady, natural breathing. Despite it being Caitlin's first pregnancy, it was entirely plausible that she might be uncertain about what exactly to do. Yet, like mothers across various species, she tapped into her profound, innate instincts, instincts that were critical for her cub's survival. With exceptional poise, Caitlin initiated the meticulous process of caring for her cub. Her dedication knew no bounds as she gently maneuvered the tiny creature with her tongue. 
methodically stroking its chest before shifting direction to caress its delicate ribs and back. Caitlin was wholly committed to her efforts, and it soon became evident that her diligent care was yielding results. The tiny cub, displaying remarkable fortitude, intensified its efforts to breathe. Some faint sounds emerged, hopeful indications that at least some oxygen was reaching its small lungs. Nevertheless, the battle was far from over. In a critical moment, Caitlin cast a perplexed look at Jail and the devoted group of caregivers surrounding her as a rapid change unfolded within. In this intricate situation, it was crucial to acknowledge that Caitlin was navigating the challenges of pregnancy for the first time. Each step of this journey was uncharted territory for her. The tigress had recently faced a strenuous 30-minute battle to safeguard her newborn cub. As time moved forward, Caitlin found herself in labor once more, preparing to bring her second cub into the world. The survival of her first cub was still uncertain, teetering on the brink of life and death. Fortunately, this time nature seemed to align with Caitlin's needs as the delivery of the second cub proceeded without complications. And the newborn appeared robust and healthy. This tiny, furry newcomer began to wriggle and squirm acclimating to the expansive new world outside the womb. There were promising signs that the cub was beginning to breathe independently, much to the relief of everyone involved in the birthing process. In a poignant moment, the second cub issued a vigorous cry, a clear indication of its strong and autonomous respiration. The cub adjusted to the new sensations of the external environment a stark contrast to the protective comfort of its mother's womb where it had developed over the past 100 days. Jail and the entire caregiving team were overjoyed, as this cub displayed all the signs of a promising start to life. The second twin was lively, exhibiting kicks and cries that were all positive indicators of a healthy beginning. With these encouraging developments, Caitlin was able to redirect her focus to her first cub, which, despite its faint cries, was still engaged in a critical battle to breathe independently. Caitlin, with relentless dedication, continued to lick and gently nudge the cub in an effort to stimulate its breathing. Alongside her, Sheila participated earnestly in the efforts to revive the struggling cub. It is a well-accepted belief among tiger caregivers that the essence of exceptional care lies in a profound love and unwavering commitment to the animals they nurture aiming primarily to cultivate a deep bond with the tigers they care for. Jail's deep affection for Caitlin and the team's steadfast commitment were evident throughout this intense ordeal. It was as though they were all rooting for her from the depths of their souls, fervently hoping for the cub to breathe and embrace life. The rest of the zoo staff, who were watching the birth on a TV monitor, were equally captivated, their emotions deeply intertwined with the unfolding drama. Their focus was entirely consumed by the desperate struggle for the cub's survival. Reflecting a collective hope for a positive outcome, in a remarkable display of maternal dedication and instinct, Caitlin, a Sumatran tiger, faced a critical moment shortly after giving birth, while her second cub burst into the world full of vitality, energetically taking its first breaths. The first cub encountered severe difficulties. Caitlin, with her gentle and precise touches, worked diligently to stimulate the struggling cub's lungs. Initially, progress was minimal as the cub fought to breathe on its own. Caitlin's relentless perseverance never wavered. Her maternal instincts were as fierce and unconditional as any human mother's could be. Perhaps even more so given her innate connection to her offspring. Her efforts gradually bore fruit. The cub began to show signs of breathing independently. This critical moment was not just a victory for the cub but a triumph of natural instinct and maternal care. The once struggling cub, having overcome its precarious start, did not just survive, it thrived, it grew into a robust male, contributing valuable genetic diversity essential for the conservation of the endangered Sumatran tiger species. This story not only underscores the resilience of nature but also highlights the crucial role of individual animals in the broader conservation efforts. What are your thoughts on this incredible story? I invite you to share your views and engage in the discussion below. Let's continue to see another story. Certain phenomena defy explanation. For instance, 
Every time this tiger saw a particular girl, it would bow respectfully. The heartbreaking reason behind this behavior was discovered later. Eager to reach the tiger exhibit, young Mandy could barely contain her excitement. Though not yet articulate, she clutched her tiger plush toy tightly in one hand while tugging her parents, Andrea and Connor, with the other. Her parents chuckled at her enthusiasm. Among her few spoken words was, Tiger. Despite her tender age, Mandy remembered precisely how to navigate her way to see the tigers. She was adamantly opposed to sitting in her stroller, constantly urging her parents to hurry so she could see her beloved animals as soon as possible. Having had a good night's sleep, Mandy was brimming with energy and sprinted toward the tiger exhibit, her parents trailing behind. Unaware of the surprise that awaited them, the zoo was a favored destination for the family. As Mandy adored animals, upon their arrival, they noticed a new addition at the back of the tiger enclosure. The enclosure featured a large safety glass wall that allowed visitors to view the animals without any risk, ensuring complete safety and an unobstructed view. While her parents relaxed on a nearby bench, Mandy zigzagged across the enclosure cheerfully greeting each tiger with a loud, hello. Her excitement peaked when she spotted a new Bengal tiger perched on a rock at the far end of the spacious enclosure. The enclosure was designed to be expansive and deep, giving the animal space to retreat from the bustling crowd whenever they wished. The signage revealed that the Bengal tiger was named Koshi. Initially, Koshi stayed at the back, but upon noticing Mandy, he gradually approached the front until he pressed against the glass. He fixated on her as she ran back and forth. When Mandy finally paused in front of him, the other children tried to capture his attention. But Koshi only had eyes for her. Mandy stood right at the glass. And for a brief moment, she stood completely still. Suddenly, the tiger bowed, capturing an unforgettable moment. His front paw sprang up, pressing against the glass causing all the children to recoil in alarm. They distanced themselves from the glass, and even the parents took a step back briefly, though they were aware that the glass was too thick for the tiger to shatter. While all the children retreated, Mandy did the opposite. The little girl advanced and placed her hands where the tiger's paws rested. As soon as she did this, the tiger lowered its head and seemed to bow to her. It was a remarkable moment for Andrea and Connor. The surrounding crowd fell silent, though the quiet didn't last long. Other children attempted to replicate the interaction, but the tiger ignored them, refusing even to glance their way. Mandy darted away again, and the tiger tracked her movements along the glass. The sight of a tiger seemingly stalking a child might appear alarming in hardly a suitable setting to leave a child. But Andrea didn't perceive aggression in the tiger. Instead, she saw a creature that appeared melancholic, and its repeated pacing along the glass seemed to momentarily alleviate its sorrow. It was as if the tiger was imitating the child's actions, a sight Andrea found astonishing. Mandy was too young to understand the uniqueness of the interaction, but it was clear to her family that the tiger was fixated solely on the little girl. Mandy continued to move in front of the other children, as they were all playing and her parents made an effort to ensure she didn't obstruct anyone. However, the area near the tiger enclosure became increasingly congested with Mandy and Koshi. The tiger, deeply engaged with one another, making it difficult for her to be mindful of others. Andrea and Connor grew concerned that other families might start to get annoyed with their toddler. Most onlookers were captivated by the rare spectacle, but her parents noticed several disapproving stares. A zoo staff member was observing them closely, which added to their worry, deciding that Mandy had spent enough time with her favorite animal for now. They chose to leave, unaware that they were under scrutiny. There was still an entire zoo to explore, boasting vast enclosures and numerous enrichment programs designed to keep the animals content. The zoo also facilitated safe public interactions with many animals, emphasizing education and conservation providing children with ample opportunities for meaningful experiences. Special moments with the animals made the rest of Mandy's day incredible. She had the opportunity to feed ostriches and offer a tall leaf to the giraffes. 
They observed from afar as the zoo staff fed the lions and cleaned the shark tank. Mandy participated in various activities, volunteering alongside her baby, Babel, whenever assistance was needed. Unlike some older children who had developed fears of the unknown, Mandy was fearless, naturally gifted with animals. Mandy didn't need a zoo visit for animals to be drawn to her. They always surrounded her. This amazed and pleased her parents every time they visited friends and family who had pets. Initially, these pets were said to dislike children. Yet by the end of the evening, they would be cuddling with Mandy during her nap. Her parents remained cautious about the potential dangers animals could pose. But Mandy had a unique ability to befriend them. On a tropical beach vacation, they would relax on the sand and little wild birds would perch on Mandy's shoulder. Even dolphins approached her during a boat trip on that same vacation. For Mandy, being adored by animals was the norm. She loved them wholeheartedly and was never afraid. Her special connection with animals was evident at the zoo where visiting and seeing the animals was just another ordinary day for her. They met several smaller ambassador animals and even visited the zoo nursery to see the newborn baby gorillas, which was incredibly sweet. Despite enjoying all the animals, Mandy kept asking to return to see the tigers, particularly one named Koshi. Her parents humorously noted that teaching her his name might have been a mistake, as they would likely hear about him often. Mandy was thrilled to spend ample time at the zoo, and they even had lunch there. By the time they decided to go back to see the tigers again, the area was much quieter than it had been in the morning. Connor felt a bit paranoid as he noticed the same zoo staff member seemingly following them around the zoo all day. He wondered if the man suspected they might try to take one of the animals or get into trouble, ensuring their toddler wouldn't harm an animal, or be allowed to was a priority for her parents. As much as gentleness was a trait their daughter possessed, it was peculiar observing the same man appear repeatedly throughout the zoo. Yet Connor chose to remain silent to avoid spoiling the outing. When they returned to the tiger enclosure, only one other family was there, but they departed shortly after they arrived. Koshi, the tiger, was again perched on his rock at the far end of the enclosure his head drooping over the edge, exuding a sense of defeat. The sight of such a large, majestic creature appearing so utterly despondent was baffling, but it persisted until Mandy shouted, Koshi, Koshi, come here. Despite not yet calling her grandparents by name, she had quickly memorized the tiger's name. At her call, Koshi's head jerked up, and upon spotting her, he dashed towards the glass. His approach, a large tiger barreling towards them, might have intimidated anyone on the other side of the glass. It seemed as though he would crash through, but he halted abruptly just before the barrier, gazing down at the girl, then sat and placed his paws against the glass, bowing his head as he had done previously. This peculiar gesture of submission was unique to her presence, puzzling everyone. Now that Mandy wasn't causing trouble, her parents relaxed and let her enjoy the interaction. Suddenly, the zoo staff member who had been shadowing them all day reappeared. Connor tensed, hoping the visit wouldn't disrupt his daughter's joy. However, the employee, Sam, the head zookeeper, had no such negative intentions. Instead, he was eager to explain the unusual behavior of Koshi the tiger, which he had attempted to discuss several times but was always interrupted. Now, he could unveil the melancholic reason behind Koshi's actions each time the tiger saw the little girl. The family was about to learn the poignant story, concerning the tiger that Sam and his team had been worriedly monitoring for months. A few months prior to reaching the age where he could integrate with his peers, a tiger was rescued and brought to the zoo. Unlike others of his kind, he was not aggressive and quickly adapted to his new environment. The initial challenge of getting him to be accepted by the zoo community was swiftly handled. However, this did not mean they were completely out of danger. Koshi, the tiger, suffered from severe depression. He showed no interest in interacting with other animals or engaging in enrichment activities. Choosing to isolate himself, he spent his time in the most secluded corner he could find. His disinterest in food was evident. 
and he ate just enough to keep himself alive. Consequently, he appeared much thinner than a tiger of his size should be. The zookeepers realized that adjusting to zoo life was going to be a significant challenge, and the situation seemed more dire than anticipated. Tragically, Koshi's story began when he was saved from a life as a pet. The police had raided a property belonging to a man arrested for various offenses, including running a poaching and animal trapping ring as part of the exotic animal trade, a venture that had been quite lucrative for him. This man was also engaged in numerous other illegal activities and was facing a long prison sentence. Among the various illegal items discovered at the property, they found a young tiger, Koshi. After capturing him, the man decided to keep Koshi as his own pet. He confined the cub to a small enclosure, which Koshi soon outgrew. Then, he was chained up in the backyard and showcased to all the man's friends. Concerned that Koshi might harm someone, the man had the tiger declawed, a cruel and painful procedure that greatly affected Koshi's behavior. As Koshi grew, even his dreadful owner began to fear him. Despite his declawed state, Koshi could still inflict damage with his teeth. Consequently, his food was reduced, and he was largely neglected. Throughout this ordeal, there was a glimmer of kindness, the daughter of the housekeeper, who was hardly treated better than the animals. Unnoticed by the owner, she ensured that Koshi had clean water and some food. She even tried to comfort him, resting her head against him occasionally, offering some solace during his miserable circumstances. Eventually, the police intervened, confiscating the tiger during their raid. The young girl, Mandy, wanted to visit Sam the tiger at the zoo. But the distance was too great and the costs were too high for her to visit regularly. Sam, a tiger sent to the zoo for rehabilitation and a better life, was suffering from deep depression that seemed impossible to alleviate. However, his spirits lifted the day he met Mandy, sparking hope in Sam that perhaps happiness was still attainable. Mandy seemed to evoke memories of a friend Sam had back at the compound. Although she was much younger, her compassionate nature resonated with him deeply. Sam implored the zookeepers to facilitate regular visits from Mandy, believing these could help restore Koshi's joy. The zoo staff, prioritizing the tiger's well-being, issued the family a pass that allowed them early access to the zoo so that Koshi and Mandy could spend time together without disturbances, while ensuring their safety by keeping them separated by a glass barrier. Despite not being able to interact directly as she could with the friend at the compound, Mandy remained safe, and they managed to share affection through the glass. Andrea and Connor, understanding the positive impact these visits had, took Mandy to the zoo frequently, where she gained invaluable experiences. Over time, Mandy became a cherished part of the zoo community, earning privileges like feeding some of the baby animals. Most importantly, Koshi's condition improved remarkably. He was no longer depressed and even started interacting with other animals. This success story not only changed Koshi's life but also shaped Mandy's future. Growing up with a profound love for animals, inspired by her numerous visits and interactions at the zoo, Mandy pursued a career as a veterinarian at the same zoo, dedicated to caring for its animals long-term. This was all thanks to one tiger who had a unique way of showing his gratitude by bowing to her. What an incredible tale. What would you do if a tiger charged at you from behind a glass wall? Feel free to share with us in the comments section below. And then there is another similar warm story. Let's continue to see. When a man rescues a near-death tiger, he initially thinks their farewell is imminent. However, as time progresses, the situation takes a surprising turn, and an incredible event unfolds. Despite the chilly morning air, with temperatures plummeting below freezing, Vanna was trekking through the icy terrains of eastern Tagatha. Heavy snow had blanketed the area overnight, and as part of his duties as a forester, Vanna was checking to make sure the paths between his log cabin and the neighboring villages were passable. Throughout his journey, signs of life were scarce. But as he navigated an especially snow-laden stretch, a distinct cry for help pierced the silence. It resembled the sound of a child, 
an unlikely occurrence since no responsible parent would allow their child outside in such harsh conditions. After advancing only a few steps further, Vanna realized the source was not a human child, but a much rarer sight. Only the tip of its nose was visible through the snow, but it was unmistakable, a tiger cub, specifically a Siberian tiger, a critically endangered species, navigating the perilous snowy terrain. Vanna reached the cub and started excavating it from its frozen trap. It took nearly half an hour to liberate the cub, during which Vanna also noticed its injured leg. Utilizing some timber and his available equipment, he crafted a makeshift sled to transport the cub. As the cub slid across the snow, it closed its eyes, utterly exhausted and on the brink of survival. Vanna hurried home, pushing through his fatigue. Upon arrival, he quickly warmed the cabin with a fire and nourished the cub with some milk. He then attended to the cub's wounds, cleaning and dressing them despite the cub's discomfort with the disinfectant smell. Once he secured the splint and bandaged the leg, Vanna made a cozy spot by the fire where the cub eventually fell into a deep sleep. Though Vanna felt a bit uneasy with the tiger cub in his cabin, he knew he couldn't just expel it and let nature run its course. The cub was too vulnerable to survive alone, and its life was too valuable to discard. Hence, he chose the only compassionate alternative available. He constructed a temporary enclosure and resolved to care for the tiger cub until it was robust enough to return to the wild under Vanna's supervision. The cub flourished, its injured leg healed perfectly, though it left a noticeable scar, which, fortunately, didn't affect its movement at all. Initially, Sharing his log cabin with the cub felt like living with a giant housecat. However, as time passed, the cub grew to the size of a large dog and eventually surpassed any dog in size. Although Vanna cherished his colossal companion, whom he had named Bank, he recognized the need for separation was approaching. To ease this transition, he engaged Bank in simulated hunting activities by hanging meat from a tree or dragging it across the forest floor aiming to awaken the tiger's predatory instincts. When he noticed Bank stalking a neighbor's goat, Vanna realized it was time for them to part ways. Fortunately, Bank wouldn't be alone as Vanna had recently seen a young tigress observing them from a distance. She seemed perplexed by the unusual bond between tiger and man, but Vanna saw this as the perfect chance for Bank to reintegrate into the wild without distress. On the planned day of Bank's release, Vanna packed a lunch and prepared for a day-long hike. Bank appeared to relish walking alongside him, but upon detecting the scent of the female tiger, he became visibly more alert. Vanna stepped back, knowing this was the moment he had hoped for. Everything seemed to be proceeding smoothly until Bank suddenly turned and trotted back toward Vanna. No, no, Vanna yelled, but Bank kept coming. It was time for a painful decision. With a heavy heart, Vanna picked up a rock and threw it at the tiger. The stone grazed him, and Bank let out a bewildered roar. Vanna turned and walked away. The difficulty of leaving his tiger behind weighing heavily on him. He never looked back and half expected Bank to be waiting at the log cabin. But he was not. Bank never appeared on any of his subsequent walks. Vanna felt awful about their final interaction. But he drew strength from knowing he had done what was best for Bank. Over time, the guilt and pain subsided, and his last encounter with Bank became nothing more than a distant, painful memory. As Vanna wandered through the wilderness, he believed life was progressing well until he began to manifest alarming signs that pointed to a grave health issue. His weight dropped as he frequently felt too nauseous to eat, and his strength waned to the point where he could no longer spend lengthy periods trekking through his cherished snowy forests due to overwhelming fatigue and weakness. An array of disheartening medical tests and scans later confirmed that his kidneys were deteriorating. And without medical intervention, his condition would prove fatal. For Vanna, the thought of abandoning his forest ranger duties felt akin to a death sentence. Despite the dangers of postponing treatment, his attachment to the forest made him hesitant to leave. However, the choice would soon be taken out of his hands. On a particularly challenging day, as Vanna meandered through the terrain, 
His thoughts were clouded with nostalgia for the times he had freely roamed the woods with his dog bank trotting beside him. Engulfed in melancholy, he wished for the wilderness to remain untouched and wild long after he was gone. Absorbed in his thoughts, he initially dismissed the sharp, pungent odor of smoke filling the air. It was only when the smoke thickened, making breathing laborious, that he could no longer deny the presence of an extraordinary fire. When he finally looked up, he saw a rapidly advancing wildfire threatening everything in its path, including himself. Vanna's immediate worry was for the wildlife in jeopardy. He quickly issued a warning to all nearby forest rangers about the encroaching blaze. Soon, he heard the sound of helicopter blades overhead, reassured that his message had potentially saved many lives. Yet, Vanna himself was alarmingly close to the wildfire. Despite attempting to move swiftly, his compromised health significantly hindered his mobility. Two years prior, he would have easily escaped. But now, with labored breathing and painful legs, he stumbled and felt his consciousness fade, realizing he lacked the strength to rise again. He anticipated the fire would soon consume and end him, his ashes merging with the land post-fire, which oddly seemed fitting in his weakened state. As he lay there, Vanna thought he felt a nudge at his arm and shoulder and something licking his face. In his dazed state, he assumed it was a dream until something firmly gripped his collar with strong teeth, challenging what he believed was possible. In a dramatic turn of events, a creature started pulling Vanna away from the scorching heat through the smoke toward a place where the air was cooler and more breathable. When Vanna opened his eyes, he recognized the pale orange fur of a Siberian tiger. Known as the Magnificent, this robust tiger, his savior, prepared to depart after the rescue. As it turned, Vanna noticed a distinct scar on its leg, a permanent testament to a past injury that had nearly ended its life. At that pivotal moment, Bank, the tiger, returned to Vanna to remind him of the enduring value of life. Once he was able to stand, Vanna realized he was nearly back home. His friends had cherished their shared memories and had risked their lives for his safety. Tears welled up in his eyes as he watched Bank walk away. It wasn't his time to pass away. He knew he needed immediate medical attention for his ailment and to return to his beloved forest as a rejuvenated man. He owed it to himself. But he also owed it to Bank. What a poignant conclusion. If you have a similar tale about an animal hero, do share it in the comments. We'd love to hear about it. We'll catch up with you in the next video.